Hey, hey, hey. What you got to say? We gon' fly like an eagle to the sea. Fly like an eagle. Let your spirit carry me. We gonna fly right into the future. Say, hey, hey, hey. What you got to say? Hey, hey, hey. What you got? Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo Welcome to my channel Hey yo, hey yo Listen up, listen up Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo The wireless woman Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls Okay Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot. Room 303, if you are new, welcome to my crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then, like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. Feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, we'll go ahead on and subscribe. But before you link, share this link. Welcome back, Wi-Fi's, to yet another episode of The Wireless Woman. It is really amazing to be here. And I'm going to pull back some layers today to get into why that is such a blessing. This episode is called, Where in the World is the Wireless Woman? And I'm going to be telling you all about where I've been for the two and a half months <laughs> from August until now that I was off of YouTube. And if anything is consistent about this channel, <laughs> it's changed. So I hope you like some of the new intros and outros that I've added to the transmission. But before we get into today's content, you already know what time it is. What are we going to do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to unplug from the Matrix. This transmission is going analog. I am old as dirt, and I've seen things as you have. Why do you bring this rage to my doorstep? All right, Wi-Fi's, welcome back to another transmission of the wireless woman coming from our underground bunker in room 303. Do me a favor on your way in and like this video. It's our own little way of saying damn the man. Or if you're really into civil disobedience, you can dislike the video i mean who cares just make your presence known so this video is going to cut in and out to different parts because they have been recorded at different times as <laughs> many of my newer episodes are going to be i'm going to be talking today about where i've been in my two and a half months that i was away from youtube It's not anywhere cool or great or anything. I didn't put any stamps on my passport or anything real exotic like that. But <laughs> while I was away, I was talking to some of my friends offline and they reminded me of the fact that even though I've told the story of why I started my YouTube channel over a year ago now, I. I know it hasn't felt like a year because I've been on and off. I've probably only been here about seven or eight months out of the year, but that's not the point. That's not the point. The point is, even though in my um, Who is the Wireless Woman episodes, I think there's a part one and a part two, like way back in season one, I talked about my inspiration and my motivation to start my YouTube channel, but I haven't really given a lot of information or given or going into a lot of detail of what has happened over the years since. And even just looking back on those videos, <laughs> it 
you can see how much different I looked back then. I was, I weighed a whole lot less and I looked much younger, but there was a process during my year and about a month or two of being off of the grid, no phones, TVs, you know, all organic foods and it was glorious okay but in the process of coming back down off my moses mountain of revelation to come back and start my channel a lot of things in my day-to-day -day life have changed so i'm going to start by telling you <laughs> where i was for those two months and then we'll go into what's been going on now so my hiatus originally began as a microphone malfunction and instead of just continuing to record i have a rode microphone that's on top of my camera it just kind of you can hear all the space and all the noise in the room when i use that particular microphone i really set myself to fixing the conundrum that was my microphone at the time and one week turned into two weeks and two weeks turned into three and three weeks turned into a month before I was really able to resolve the mystery of the microphone. And as you can see, I have the same microphone, but I did get a new blue foam cover. I'm really excited about it. I think it gives me like a little bit of flair, a little bit of juice, if you will, for my channel. But in the process of fixing my microphone malfunction, and it's crispy, it's crispy now, right? It's crispy. I, um, you know, I don't know. I just started to feel an anxiety about coming back onto the channel. And the more that anxiety built, it's kind of like a coffee high. Eventually it crashes down into very debilitating depression, which I am actually still in the process of combating. Um, I've had to change a lot of my daily habits that were lending themselves to me being more and more and more sedentary. So I am back on doing my gratitude journal that has been helping tremendously. I'm still in therapy and stayed with my therapy routine throughout the dark days, throughout my cloudy, depressed days. And, you know, having someone who is willing to get a rope, <laughs> not get down in a hole with you. You know, a lot of us enjoy being in toxic spaces with people we feel like get us. But um, having my therapist to, you know, lower that hole down in and say, listen, I'm willing to pull if you're willing to pull. You know, it's it's a good space to be in. And he gave me really um, practical. He gave me really practical strategies on how to work with my depression. You know, my process, since I'm not medicated for my anxiety is to continuously learn new coping skills. It's just like any other disease, say diabetes or lupus. Not that I'm comparing it to those, but I'm saying just like any disease or disorder that we would have that you have to learn how to manage with your diet, get more rest, self-care, you know, those are the things you have to prioritize in those times when your mental health ain't healthing, <laughs> when, when it's not giving what's supposed to be gave. And that's what I've really done is turned up the volume, pumped up the volume on, you know, just my self-care and prioritizing those things, which unfortunately meant that my channel had to take a bit of a backseat, but I love being able to come to you with stories of triumph, you know, being able to be in a healthy space and create a healthy environment is far more important to me than being heard, than, you know, being understood in a place where it requires people to be at their worst, to hear where I'm coming from. I don't want to be a person that's leading people <laughs> into dark spaces. I want to be a light. 
And it's so funny because whenever I come to my channel, like I really have this heavy mood when like in real life, <laughs> in my in my former life, when I was Joan of Arc, like I'm really super upbeat. It's crazy. But there are just so many heavy things in the world that when we come into these spaces, we want to feel like we've moved that dialogue along. And with that being said. So during the year that I was, you know, off the grid, especially particularly off social media, my anxiety got so much better. And while social media isn't a hundred percent responsible for all of my anxiety, it's a, it's at least half. Social media is a very toxic place for people who want to live above the influence <laughs> of really anything. That was really how the Cult of Personality series splintered off from some of the other things that were going on with me in the wireless woman journey. However, when I came back and I started the channel, of course, I had to redo my social media, get all of the things that I needed for my channel and go back to watching TV and being on the phones. You know, those types of things with the world opening back up, going back into work. Of course, you can't sit at home all day like we did when we worked from home. And you could stock your refrigerator, eat the foods that really give life to your body. So just getting back to that regular grind and hustle of the free world has gotten me into some very bad habits all over again and unfortunately you can't beat your habits your habits show who you really are inside we always want to believe that our character our intentions are something different than what comes out but it's giggo as we used to have back in the analog days those that did any of that binary coding on computers no it's garbage in garbage out whatever you input into your computer i.e. your brain, your mainframe, your system, whatever programming you are downloading into your system, that's going to be the program that runs. That's going to be the product that comes out. So when I came back to starting my channel, at that time, I had people and friends around me that were helping me out but I started to instantly become very sick. I started going to the doctor because I had a lymph node in my neck that was the size of a golf ball. And I was very tired. I was very sick. They couldn't figure out where the infection was coming from. They tested my blood. They tested me for like everything you can be tested for. They did MRIs. They did a mammogram. They did, um, they did ultrasounds and couldn't come up with anything. But what happened when I came back to social media, using phones, earbuds in your ear, I got blue light poisoning, blue, blue light toxicity. And we don't really recognize how much of a psychological, spiritual, physiological, physical, emotional effect these machines have on us and i think that people who are coming into this digital age from an analog world feel they feel it so much more than people who <laughs> were created <laughs> coded in the matrix those of us that have been uploaded imported into the mainframe those that had an analog version we feel so much older. We feel so out of touch, even with the thinking, because a lot of this cult mentality that everybody's on, it really is so foreign to the children of the 60s and 70s and 80s that really got our identity from being unique. And so when I came back, I got really, really sick and I hadn't noticed how much of an effect the machines had on my body so with being wired back up like that you know 
like TikTok is something I can barely even watch. I know the kids love it, and now a lot of adults that are my age have really gotten into it, just ticking and talking, ticking and talking, ticking and talking. But I, <laughs> I don't know. It just feels like a train that's moving us towards something that isn't a, a great destination. We're really not paying attention to where we're going. But I have to take time off of this platform it has proven to be very toxic for me in ways that I had not anticipated. I only came back really to spread the word of saying that we have got to get out of the matrix. We have got to take time to think about our footprint. And people who are podcasting, particularly in my generation, like the millennials, it's it's tough. It really is. And you can grow a following in darkness like a fungus like a mold and just say anything and the truth of the matter is we're 40 now you know if you're going to be a 40 year old podcaster you have the ability the right to say whatever it is that you want to say to gather whatever people around you that you want cheering on your beliefs and views but the place that i was in over the last two months it just was not going to be a place that I could spread light from. And like I said, I had the ability to come on here and say whatever I wanted to say. And people will say that because there's a certain part of not putting your struggles on camera that does feel a little disingenuous. However, for me, it's much, much more important the seeds that I'm sowing because during that year that I was off the grid, with the wireless woman, it was the first time that I ever grew food, grew my own food. This is so important for us to really start making this a priority that everyone have a food source. Even if you don't have anything but some tomatoes, a couple of cucumbers, you know, some arugula, whatever you decide to grow, it is not just the food itself, which is so much more healthy, it is the process of learning how to bring forth life. So many of the mechanisms, so much of the programming that we have around us tends itself to death. You know, looking at how much of a sensation this whole Jeffrey Dahmer Netflix series was, looking at how much, you know, glory people give to the gory is proof of where we are right now. But when you really are responsible for a life, and not a, a life that has autonomy like a child, because I know people are like, well, you just have children for that. But no, I mean, something that relies on you for how it turns out. Bringing food from the ground really changed my process and my mindset about what type of seeds I want to sow. And this social media platform it really lends itself to the profits of the generation. It really gives people the ability to build a legacy in a whole different way than what was accessible to people before. People will know you publicly and privately through these platforms. You're able to put your most private struggles out in front of other people to see you naked and a lot of us have lost shame a lot of us have gotten to a place of thinking that these platforms make you godlike in a way where you can be naked and unashamed but there's a penalty for that when you're not connected to the one that gives you that glory in the first place and i found myself coming back to this wanting to make videos out of that dark place but it was something that when I watched it back and it filled me I mean it's satisfying like fast food it's satisfying <laughs> to fill yourself up with empty calories but the emptiness of the things that I was saying I just felt every time like I just needed more time still do still do which is why I did an episode not even to explain or to give excuse for why I hadn't been here, I did an episode 
to process and to program and to put that message out that we're responsible for these communities that we build and this space because it is creating a whole generation of prophets it was it was said in the bible your sons and daughters will prophesy and we didn't know what that meant <laughs> we thought it would just be td jakes and joyce meyer but it's not everybody who's sitting in front of one of these cameras has a platform has a message and this space is spiritual. It's toxic in a whole different type of way. It's, it, it can be poisonous to the mind. And a lot of these people have put messages out without thinking about the full ramifications, how it affects generations, to be quite honest, because you know, like I know, if it's on the internet, it's forever. These things are like our fingerprint. They will identify us years after our real fingerprints have decayed off of our fingers people will still be able to say this was who this person was this was who they were about these are books that we get to write that people get to ingest and i'm seeing it on my side i don't know if any podcasters because they want to be influencers are going to tell that truth but those seeds that we sow they come back to harvest in your real personal life you look at wendy williams walking around now a basket case that darkness you put out it comes back you know kevin samuels killing over dead on a prostitute like straight color purple style you know i don't care how many people support these people even in infamy those chickens come back to your home to roost and there's no public persona that i want to have that's worth the private personal agony that you go through to be a person who's clout chasing and willing to say the things that will grow you the greatest audience you can go to the club right now. You can call up five of your friends and say, I'm going to the club tonight. If they millennials, probably not. They probably ain't going. But my point is, you can get more people to go to the club with you than to go to church. And I never was getting on this channel to have a large social media following. My following was larger prior to getting unplugged than it is now but I want to have a safe space in my own home to say the things that need to be said from a place of love for my community, from a place of how do we build and make things better, and from the place of my locus of control. I don't want to keep having these conversations about how to get a man you know who's at fault the community is this the community is that the only thing we can do is be the best women we know how to be at a certain point i thought my channel would be more for the culture you know but the culture is holding us in darkness and in toxicity and you have these people like kanye west and Candace Owens that are out here trying to say things that are counter cultural from a place of feeling like that's healthy but Fred Hampton said that we cannot counteract white capitalism with black capitalism the only way we beat white capitalism is with socialism there are some things in black culture that are just as toxic as social media is where you can find a whole bunch of people to agree with you but being real isn't always being right and while I want to keep my channel as real as I can it's not going to be to the detriment of myself and people who would stumble along this channel if they're going to find solidarity with me then we have to do it 
in a place that's healthy. We have to do it in a place that exposes darkness. Because I know when I say healthy, people think I ain't. Listen, anybody can get it. <laughs> people think because we say healthy, there's nothing intrusive about that. But if there's a cancer, we have to be willing to cut it out. We have to be willing to live without a cancerous limb. And that is really the point that I'm making. Some of these things that we as black women have allowed to infect and infest our community is reprehensible. Period. And I want to come on this channel and expose it and deal with it and introduce something back into this space which is critical which is independent critical thinking i'm not here to necessarily be right not saying you're right we're here to deduce we're here to investigate we're here to listen to learn to uncover to unplug be unbothered and ultimately if we do this right if we do it together if we listen to each other if we listen to the voices from the past I'm hoping that we as black women can recover all the energy and all the power that we have put out into the world back to ourselves so that we can be unleashed it was for such a time as this that we were born and created. We have had our own movement striving for rights, for equal treatment that has been buried in the culture. Buried in a culture that has never given us a place to be free. And unfortunately, as we've heard so many of our civil rights leaders in the past say, we can't all be free until we are all free. This is the final frontier. The last has to become first. And I recognize a lot of people think I'm out of order. But that is the order. <laughs> that the last comes first. We can sit here and have these conversations about whether or not you serve the men or the children first, but whoever came last gets served first. I know somebody's going to be mad at me because I fed a kid instead of a man, but I said what I said. And this is your daily reminder that Magneto was right. The war is still coming, Charles, and I intend to fight it by any means necessary. Every fight for freedom that did not cost the freedom fighters anything has failed. You cannot be given freedom. Freedom is something that has to be earned from within. And what we as black people have found is that we've been freed from slavery but not slave mentality. And someone asked me at brunch today, boy, I'm black women in brunch. I love brunch. This is, this is, now this is a thing I want to keep. But I was asked by one of my friends, she said, do you think that Kanye West was right or wrong when he said slavery was a choice? And let me first just say something I never thought I would say. Yay is a coon. Like, I rocks with Kanye, but whoever this yay person is, I just, I'm going to separate myself from that. So much so, I'm not going to give you the answer I gave her at brunch because it's irrelevant. But what I do think is that continuing to be a slave to what the culture dictates is now our choice. And I've made mine by any means necessary. By any means necessary. Whoever doesn't want to see black women free, they're not going to find themselves represented, supported. They're not going to find community here on this channel. 
But if you see what I see and you feel like I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. And until the next transmission, stay unplugged, unbothered. leaders what is our concept one band one sound one band one sound